As Congress makes little headway towards a stimulus package, airline companies and public transit departments are preparing to lay off thousands of workers if an agreement is not reached soon. Join us to discuss the impact the congressional stalemate is having on transportation industry employees is president of the Transportation Workers Union, John Samuelson. It's great to see you again, sir. Good to see you, John. Yeah, good, good to be here. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Just give us an update on the situation that is facing your members. So we have a, a crushing situation right now for transport sector workers, both on the airline industries, airline industry side as well as the public transit side, and railroads for that matter. So right now there's a stalemate, as you said, in Congress, a stalemate in Washington, uh, which is going to trigger tens of thousands of layoffs in October 1st, and a little later than that probably in public transit. But nonetheless, those, those layoffs would be coming. Um, absent a, a secondary bailout. And it's an ugly, ugly situation. And so, John, lay that out for what that means. Lack of bailout, lack of more public assistance. What does it mean for your workers? And what is the current state of how your union and how your members are faring at this moment? You wrote a recent op-ed in the New York Times about the five-alarm fire for the New York City subway system. Now, I live here in Washington, D.C. It's the same thing on the metro. Ridership is down something like 90 percent, probably the same thing in Philadelphia, Boston, so many other places. What does that mean for your members? So right now in, in New York, the New York City transit system and the entire MTA system for that matter is so heavily reliant on the fare box for revenues. The, the New York City transit system is funded roughly 50% um, uh, by the fares. So with the pandemic, there was a sharp decline in ridership. It's created a massive budget crisis, um, a very real budget crisis this time. We've had so many fights with them in the past with fictitious budget crisis to try to undermine our contract negotiations and whatnot, but this is real. And absent this federal government bailout, the MTA in New York has announced an intention to, to cut headcount by over 7,000 workers. And, you know, whether they could do that or not is, um, is yet to be seen. We certainly would fight them tooth and nail with everything in our arsenal to prevent them from doing it. But nonetheless, that is their plan. And if, if you think about that, and particularly in New York, which was so heavily hit by the pandemic, it was frontline transit workers that provided sort of the circulatory system fight back against COVID-19 in terms of bringing nurses and paramedics and grocery store workers um, to, to the front lines of this fight. And this, this would be an absolute tragedy, it would be an abandonment of fr frontline transit workers. And not only that, if there's a second, secondary wave that hits the Northeast of COVID-19 and places like the MTA in New York or SEPTA in Philadelphia engage in job cuts, massive job cuts, which is their intention, uh, and a second wave hits, there's going to be there's a chance they won't be able to make service on any given day. Um, during this last pandemic, during the, the first months of the pandemic, half the workforce was quarantined at any given time. And if the workforce is sharply reduced and another quarantine is necessary, they will not be able to make service. And if they can't make service, the, the whole entire fight back against COVID-19 is undermined. Nurses won't get to hospitals. Paramedics won't get to work. Grocery store workers won't get to work. The, the, the food supply, the supply chain for food delivery would be jeopardized. So it's a very bad situation right now. Yeah. Right. Well, and the reason they were quarantined is because so many people got sick. I mean, that was exactly right. You talk about an abandonment of your workers. These were not only essential workers providing the circulatory system, making sure those nurses, those other critical officials could get to their jobs, but they themselves were on the front lines and taking that hit of themselves getting sick and risking death. Um, talk about the losses that you've faced and also you know, what's going on with, with the airline workers that are part of your union and why has the situation for them been a little bit different? So um, nationally, the TW has had nearly 150 fatalities. The epicenter of, of that hit came in New York, across downstate New York. Um, the MTA itself um, has somewhere in the neighborhood of 135 fatalities. And by the way, it's not just New York and COVID-19 is still alive. We had a fatality of a bus operator in Miami yesterday. And so this is very real still. Now, um, by the way, that quarantine situation was, was bargained out by the union to reduce workplace um, compression and in, in most cases. So at any given time, we had half the workforce off. And that, so that was in addition to the quarantines. Um, so you, one could quickly see 
a situation where there's headcount reduction in systems like the MTA in New York, it, it very likely could lead to an implosion and a failure to be able to produce service on any given day. Right. And John, lay out the human cost again for your workers there, just for if we see inaction here, if we see a second wave, is this an extinction level event for workers? And, and for, I mean, in terms of their salaries and their long term livelihoods, what's the cost here? Well, in terms of salaries and whatnot, we've fought back vigorously and we'll continue to fight back against the notion that these budget shortfalls should be um, paid for through concessions of workers. We're never going to agree to that. We will fight that to the end, tooth and nail. Um, in terms of a, a, um, just a physical loss, uh, 150 members of the TW alone across the various transport sectors, transit, airline, railroad, it's a horrific loss. And it's a testament to the work that we've done. And not only that, our sister unions in the ATU and our sister unions in the airline industry um, went out there in, in the face of danger every single day during the pandemic and got people to the front lines of this fight against COVID-19. And right. again, as I said earlier, it's an absolute total abandonment by society, by government, that these workers who risked everything would now be subjected to furloughs. Mm -hmm. John, we couldn't agree with you more, and we're so grateful for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks, John. Thank you. New polling shows Biden potentially losing ground in some critical states. We're gonna talk about that when Rising continues.